My name is Jamie and I am a woman in long-term recovery. Um, I just really want to thank Amber for asking me to be here on this live and for sharing this in her group. Um, she asked me to come and tell my story and I'm always um, humbled and, and grateful to be able to come in and share my experience, strength, and hope with people. Um, so a little bit, just intro kind of about me. Um, I live in Athens, Georgia. Um, I have, I will have six years sober in July. Um, I am 40 years old. I have two children. Um, I have an 11 year old daughter and a 17 year old son. Um, so I was born in Massachusetts. So I'm originally a New Englander turned Southerner. And so, um, growing up, uh, in New England is, is very different than the South. The people are different. The accents are different. The culture is very different. I come from a very big Italian family and we do a lot of Bacardi and a lot of pasta. And that was um, just kind of the culture that I grew up with was um, Bacardi and pasta and just seeing um, people partying and, and things like that. My parents were like really young when they had me. They were like, I think like 15 when, um, you know, they got pregnant with me and, you know, I'm 40 and I still don't have my life together. So I can't imagine um, trying to have children at, at 15. Um, so, you know, growing up, my childhood was, was you know, a little chaotic, um, alcoholic father, um, abusive kind of growing up. And it was just, um, to me, I thought that was normal. I thought that every kid was going through the same thing. I thought that every kid's parents would get drunk and beat the crap out of them and destroy their house and beat up their mom, you know? Um, I didn't know that there was anything going on in the house that was wrong. I knew that um, it didn't feel good, you know. Um, I knew that I was constantly in a, like in a feeling of um, fear, anxiety, um, always worried worried about like getting in trouble, just kind of like the unknown of like, I didn't know what I was going to walk into. So I could come home at, you know, any time and just never know what kind of household I was going to be coming home to. Was my dad going to be in a good mood and, you know, want to eat snacks and watch scary movies with me? Or, you know, was he going to kick the crap out of me down the hallway? You just never knew what was going on in the house. Um, I did have a um, a younger, I have a younger sister and brother. So I'm actually the oldest of three. And so being the oldest, I was always like the protector. Uh, I'm naturally a fixer. Uh, we'll get into that later. <laughs> um, and so I was always trying to like protect, you know, my... Uh, younger sister and brother and trying to protect my mom from like the chaos and everything going on and um so there was really um it was like I was taking on a role and an identity of somebody that or something that I shouldn't you know um being five six seven years old you're supposed to be having fun playing outside learning how to get off training wheels on a bike you know what I mean like that kind of stuff but it caused me to have to grow up very, very fast. So um, in that, it also caused me to be very introverted. So I never, you know, wanted to tell anybody what was going on at home. So this is like maybe um, an Italian culture thing. Um, I know in other cultures, um, it might be different, but in our culture, it's kind of like, um, you know, what happens at home stays at home. So there was never like a, a way or a place for me to express what was going on. So in that sense, I also lost my voice. Um, and I believe that that is where 
really a lot of my problems came in mental, emotional issues, um, identity issues is through the loss of my voice. And so, um, my, my drug use kind of started, um, my, my substance abuse disorder, my disease, my alcoholism and my addiction, it started to manifest in different ways way before I ever tried drugs and alcohol. So it started in, um, eating disorders. I, um, have been on a diet since I was five years old. <laughs> so, uh, starving myself at five, being addicted to diet pills at, at 13, 14, um, having depression, severe depression at 11, um, was the first time I, I attempted to commit suicide at, at 11. And it was just, you know, all of these things, but really the issue that I had is I, I believe that I was born with this, this substance use disorder. Um, and in my recovery, you know, when I finally did, um, did enter into my recovery, it was such a relief to me to find out that recovery is a disease of the brain and it's something that, you know, you're born with and affects things in your brain. And that's why, you know, you are the way that you are and you do the things that you do. Um, and that was very freeing to me to find out really, you know, what it was really the whole time. Cause I thought I was just super jacked up. Right. <laughs> um, you know, I started kind of using, you know, alcohol and drugs in, I would say probably high school, like 16, 17, you know, your fun high school stuff. Right. So I'm, I'm smoking pot and I'm doing, um, you know, all that kind of fun stuff, psychedelics, um, the raving thing. I wore like Jenko jeans. And, um, so we had like all, I did, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then I pretty much moved up, you know, uh, I graduated and started doing, you know, cocaine and meth and all the other, all the other good stuff. So after, um, you know, after high school, I actually went to college. I did really well. I was a very good functioning drug addict for a long time. I worked like two, I was very responsible as a drug addict in the beginning, right? Or we can, we can maintain our responsibility for, for just a little while. So I was very responsible, uh, worked two jobs, went to school. I graduated school. I got my associates in business and psychology. Um, you know, and just, you know, partied and maintained and, you know, things didn't really get like rough until like, you know, I had kids, right? Because when you have kids, um, you, you can't do that kind of stuff, <laughs> right? You can't, you can't be a, a party or up all night partying and taking care of a little one. Um, I mean, you can, but it's very hard. I know I tried. And so, um, when I became a mother, I decided that, you know, I wanted to do things the right way. And I was still early enough in my substance use disorder that for a little while I was able to do that. I was able to put down the drugs, put down the alcohol, um, you know, be a mom, have a family, um, in the, you know, the relationship, me and my children's father, we were together for like 10 years on and off. Um, and you know, my disease also manifests itself through codependency. So I'm also, um, have, you know, relationship stuff, right? So, um, the, the security blanket thing was something that I always, I always really struggled with having to have some type of security blankets or several security blankets. And so, um, when I, when I did, you know, have my child, I did, I did well for a little while. And then all of a sudden, you know, I want to say, it was maybe, um, two, two years in probably. And I, and you know, everything kind of just started. I was one day I was like, Oh, I want to, I want to drink. I want to party, you know? So like, here, we'll give my son to my mom and we'll just like go have some fun. And you know how it starts. You just, you do it once and one, what do they say? One is too many. A thousand is never enough. And so it just started my vicious cycle all over again. And, you know, it didn't go back to that beginning where I started at, where I could just do stuff and put it down. It, it started right back 
right back even stronger, right? So I, I'm I'm graduating up again, right? So I'm I'm, I'm smoking crack. I'm, I'm prostituting myself. I'm working in strip clubs. I'm doing all of these things. Um, I'm going dealing with some you know serious things happening. A lot of um, you know traumatic things that happen when you live in that world. Um, sexual assault, rape, things like that, which made me even dive more into my drug abuse. Um, it was really, really hard. And I always felt like I was all alone. Um, my kid's father ended up like going to jail and stuff. So he, he wasn't around. And then we ended up getting back together. I ended up having a daughter. Um, and you know, I thought this time I'm going to do the right thing, right? So I'm going to have this daughter and it's going to be wonderful. I'm going to have this, um, you know, amazing family. God is giving me my second chance to have a family. I'm going to do it the right way. Well, I ended up getting um, hooked on pain pills. So through my pregnancy, I was using pain pills and I ended up having my child and she was dependent on opiates when she came out so defects took her um right away uh you know they wouldn't they wouldn't let me you know have her at all thankfully they gave custody to my my mom and that was really amazing so i was really happy about that but um it was just really really hard um being in a position that like i was powerless over the situation i had just sworn with all my willpower, right? <laughs> all my willpower that I was not going to do this again. And I did. Um, I did it to another child. And so my daughter, you know, my mom ended up getting custody of her and I was just so beaten down with guilt and shame. Like what is wrong with me? Why can I not stop using I don't understand why I can't stop using. And um, that's why I said in the beginning that it was such a relief to me when I came into this program of recovery and found out that there was a solution to all of the madness and all of the craziness. And even better from there, there is a solution that I didn't have to do it alone. So, um, my clean date, uh, sober date is, um, July 20th, 2015. When I first came in, I went, um, I came in, uh, I say freely and, um, a little bit nudged because I had, uh, four years of, of prison hanging over my head and I was on like a probation, you know, um, and they told me basically, Hey, you have to pass a drug test for four years or, or you're going to go to prison. And I was like, well, I don't know how to do that. And so I had to figure out how to do that. And so I ended up going into this amazing sober living facility in Athens, Georgia, that I am still a part of. I love it. Um, it's an amazing, amazing place. Um, I had many, many paths to um, my recovery. I believe in multiple pathways. I don't believe that there is just one pathway. I, um, when I first came in, I, you know, I did what they said, right? I, um, they told me I had to go out and get a job. So I did, you know, and when I was at that place, like I was just so, I was really just so excited because I actually had a bed that was mine. Um, I had like a dresser, like a half a dresser. I had a closet to hang my stuff up in and I had a safe space and there was food there. You know, I didn't have to worry like, how was I going to eat? What was, where was I going to sleep? All of that stuff that, you know, every day in my substance abuse, like I had to, had to deal with, um, living, you know, living the street life. Um, I didn't have to deal with anymore. So it was like, you know, a little piece of heaven. And I was in there with all of these women. I was in a house with 13 girls and they were all trying to do the same thing that I was doing. And it was just like, I was just, it was like, I could breathe. Like, <sighs> finally I can breathe. And it was really, really awesome. Um, you know, I, I got a job. They told me to get a sponsor. So I did, I got a sponsor. Um, they, the sponsor, she was like, call me every day for 30 days. And I was like, oh, 
This is so uncomfortable. But I wanted to be sober so bad that I would have done anything. So I did what she said. Um, she told me to, you know, do this, the step work to go to a meeting every day. So I did. Um, I think in the beginning I started with Narcotics Anonymous <clears throat> and they, um, they were really awesome. You know, I worked the steps. I did the NA flat book. It was really great. Um, as I moved up in my recovery, I did change like past a little bit, you know, uh, I did AA. I've also done Celebrate Recovery, um, and I believe that, you know, having a foundation for me, having a foundation of these different things and different, you know, different uh, perspectives on, on steps has just helped me immensely. Um, so, you know, working steps, uh, I also had to work on other things, right? I had to work on the codependency stuff and the relationship stuff. So I had this really hard sponsor one time and she told me, no relationships until you finish all 12 steps. And I was like, you're crazy. I can't live without that because I'm like codependent, right? Like I can't live without having somebody in a relationship or something, right? Um, and so I, I kind of tested her and tested her and tested her. And then we had a situation where um, I was dating someone and they, uh, they decided they wanted to go back out after we had broke up. And even though it wasn't my fault that they decided to go back out, I felt like maybe if I hadn't put my hands in that relationship, then that wouldn't have happened, you know? And I just, I just didn't want to have, have that on, on my heart, on my conscience. Um, so I decided to submit to her <laughs> and do what she said and I had no relationships for 18 months and in that 18 months the most amazing thing happened I began to work on myself I began to work on my life I found someone who was truly worth pouring into and that was me um it was a lot of work and it was very lonely and it was hard. But in that 18 months, I healed. I healed. I learned a lot about myself. I had to take that time and think, what is Jamie like? Does she like kayaking? Does she like fishing? Does she like ice skating? <laughs> you know, what kind of movies does Jamie like? You know, because I was always, you know, trying to find my identity in other people and what other people were doing that I never learned what I liked or what I wanted. And it was time for me to be a little selfish and find out about me. So I did that. And I also, you know, started figuring out what did I want to do in life? And in that time, I... um got a lot of debt paid off. I worked. Um, I started a business. I formed um, my business Miracle Massage Group. I'm a massage therapist. I actually do recovery massage and deep tissue medical massage. Um, so I, I formed that business and laid the foundation and went out and, you know, got, um, got clients, you know, I got out in front of every single person that would listen to me, you know, doctors, chiropractors, whoever, and said, Hey, I'm Jamie and I do massage. <laughs> and it was just like really putting myself out there and just, um, you know, on this journey of like starting this life, I also became certified with the Georgia council on substance abuse and became a peer specialist for addicted disease. Also, um, I, Sheesh, I've, I've, you know, started um, healing the relationship with my children. That was really, really amazing. Um, you know, and, and there was like a lot of like hardships too in recovery, right? So I've been through like a lot of things. Um, I got married one time, like very briefly. Um, I was married, um, you know, I was up for too many days and uh, decided to run away with this guy and get married. So I ended up having to like go through a divorce and like that was really hard and really awkward. Um, also, um, my grandmother had passed away in recovery. Um, 
one of my best friends passed away in recovery. I've had a lot of people die since I've been in recovery. That is something I will say. Um, the longer I stay in recovery, the more people I lose. It's, it's really heartbreaking, which is why I think it's so important for people to speak out and share their story. Um, you know, I still have challenges today in recovery. Uh, one of the biggest challenges I find is loving myself. Um, and finding value in what I do and not who I am. So it's like I find my value in what I do. So I become like a human doer instead of a human being. And that's not what we're supposed to do, right? We're not supposed to find the value in what we can offer people. We, we have value ourselves, just us, you know, um, I get to teach at a treatment center and I teach MRT, which is moral reconnation therapy. Um, it's, it's really amazing. I get to work with these amazing, um, young women and men. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like a, it's almost like in-depth fourth step. If anybody's ever been through like drug court, you'd, you'd probably have been through it. Um, and I basically, you know, just get to, um, go through this, these exercises with them. Um, and, and it's like, it's like, I get to see them grow and their confidence build and, and in turn, it makes me feel good. Um, service is definitely my love language in recovery. So I feel like the key to being successful in recovery is finding your love language. What works for you? You know, is it meetings? Is it 12 step? Is it fitness? Is it golf? Is it, um, you know, whatever it is, um, is it helping the homeless? Like whatever makes your heart tingle and just makes you feel so full, like euphorically full. That is what, you know, your love language is. So you, you probably have like a couple of them, but you have to spend time with yourself and find out what you like and, um, you know, what, what, makes you makes you feel good in order to figure that out so service is my love language so i love to serve in the recovery community um i am i'm really big you know on speaking out and advocating and stomping out stigma for a long time i was very ashamed that i was in recovery uh, i believe it wasn't until 2018 or no, 2019, when I actually became certified with the Georgia Council on Substance Abuse, and I created my the recovery massage protocol, and that's um, that's something I'll talk about that after. Um, I was almost like embarrassed that I was in recovery. I was still trying to hide it like a secret, you know. And I was like, one day I was just like, man, Jamie, why are you so ashamed of the beautiful life that you have? And it just dawned on me. And I always say that when I lost my anonymity, my chains of shame and guilt were broken. And I became empowered to speak out and help others. So that is really like my mission is to um, stomp out stigma, to speak out about recovery, just like I did when I was starting my business with massage, getting in front of everybody that I knew. And I was saying, hey, I'm Jamie, I'm a massage therapist. Now I'm like, hey, I'm Jamie and I am a woman in recovery and I am an overcomer and I am strong and I am beautiful and I am confident and, um, you know, pushing out that message that recovery is real. Recovery is possible that we do recover. We recover out loud. We recover in community and that there is nothing that can stop us or hold us back. And, you know, there should be no shame and stigma attached to us who have overcome things that normal people would have just died over, right? Or got locked in the loony bin, right? I mean, no, I've been in the loony bin several times actually, but here I am today. <laughs> so it's like, you know, just that continuing to like push through recovery. People are the strongest people that I know. And, um, you know, today I can be proud that I'm in recovery and I just, um, recovery is one of my biggest passions and that's where the recovery massage comes in with I was going to tell you about. So I'm a massage therapist. So massage is a huge passion of mine. Recovery is my other huge passion. So I put them together. 
and called it recovery massage. So what I do is I do massage on um, men and women who are in um, early recovery, all, all times recovery, but um, especially in early recovery. And it's kind of like relapse prevention. So say you're, say you're having like a bad day, right? Um, you come in, you're tired, you're fatigued, you need to go job searching and you, you don't have any energy. You needed some kind of a creative spark because you don't know where you're going to go. Um, and you're still, you know, kind of like detoxing. You still have no endorphins, right? In early recovery, you know, we, we kind of lack energy and things like that. Um, you know, you would come in and I would say, put you on the massage table. We would do like, um, you know, an orange colored light, a grapefruit, um, essential oil and do like different acupressure points and things, um, positive affirmations, music frequency. And we would, we would do this and, you know, I would work and use just like a quick, like 30 minute massage. Um, I also do recovery massage for people who are on medicated medication assisted treatment. So I can do detox therapy so I can help you detox faster. I can help, um, stabilize up or down, um, on medication. Um, and you know, just being able to take someone who's having like a terrible day and just with it in, in 30 minutes, I can change their whole day around. And, and because I've been through it because I, I'm a, I'm a peer, right? I'm not like a, a specialist. Like I've actually, I've actually walked the trenches, the same trenches, right? Um, there's like this level of relationality, you know, and it's just, it's just really, really beautiful. Um, so that is awesome for me. It's something that I also get to serve in part of my love language and serving in the recovery community. Um, I also have a YouTube show. Um, my YouTube channel is Jamie Tall and my, um, like T A L tall, like I'm short and my YouTube channel is tall, Jamie tall. And so, um, I have a show called recovery inspired hope and I work in the Athens community and really all over the state of Georgia. I do zoom interviews too. And, and I get to, um, interview people and get them to speak out about the things that they have overcame and share it and it's just amazing the people I get to meet the stories I get to hear and I get to put it out for everybody else to hear so that the rest of the world knows that we are living proof that recovery is real and recovery is possible um today I am um I am getting married in, in October October 10th I'm actually in a healthy relationship um and there's still you know like counseling that goes on and um, still, still working like, you know, my steps in this for healthy boundaries, um, and making sure I'm staying in my lane, you know, uh, cause that, that disease likes to come out wherever it can. Right. So we, we gotta be, um, be vigilant in our pursuit of recovery every single day and, um, practicing our principles and all that kind of stuff. Right. Being quick to apologize. That's one that I'm, I'm doing being quick to apologize. Um, and that is, uh, that has been amazing. The fact that I am actually in a healthy relationship is wonderful. Um, I have a great relationship with my children today. Um, my son is 17 and it's been really challenging, um, having a 17 year old and, you know, he's doing 17 year old stuff, right? Just like I did. And it's hard to kind of watch him go through things. But, um, but I, I have faith at least that I know that, you know, if things, if he does get a little too far down the road and the, the high school partying, you know, that he'll have a good source to turn to. So that is amazing. Um, I also have an 11 year old daughter who I love, love, love. She is my sunshine. She is just amazing. Um, and she is my biggest fan. She is so proud of her mom. So, um, my, me and my mother have a great relationship today. Um, I have, uh, you know, an amazing business, a very successful business. I am saving up to buy a house. Um, I am, you know, 
I pay taxes today, just all the wonderful things that, <laughs> that recovery affords you, right? The ability to do these things. I don't have to look over my shoulder. I don't have to wonder where I'm going to sleep. I don't have to wonder where I'm going to get my next meal. Um, I can be healthy today. And, and, and the biggest thing is today I know who I am. You know, I know who I am today. I know that I am strong, I am confident, I am beautiful, and I am loved, and I am valued, and I am valuable. And I don't have to be under the, you know, chains of, of shame and guilt of addiction anymore. So thank you for letting me share my testimony. If you guys have any questions, um, put them in the comment box and I will get back to you.